Hello, welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in, sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome, welcome back if you have. My intention is unity and oneness and the highest levels of love light. I just wanna go into a little bit of flow and just do a very brief energy recap of last week and maybe talk about some of the energies moving forward if I can. We'll see where we go with this. I'll probably do that through the flow. So from my experience, many people are gra are grateful that last week is over with. Also from what I've been seeing, myself included, by the way, also what I'm noticing is that a lot of people had quite a few ahas last week. Breakdowns, breakthroughs, breakups. And when I say breakup, I mean breaking up thought patterns, breaking up stagnation, breaking up ideas and ideologies that we had about ourselves, breaking down certain aspects of our reality. Maybe it's a, a relationship breakup, breaking up with ourselves, saying, I can't do this anymore. This is done. I have to exit this, this and move into that. So that was what I saw last week happening. It was crunch town for a lot of us, again, myself included. What I'm noticing, and I've said this before and I'll continue to say because I think it's really important to recognize, while we are simultaneously processing and integrating a massive amount of uh, information, ahas, um, and potential changes in our life, whether it be physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, relationship, work, health, which is physical and all of the above, all and also what we're experiencing with people in our lives that we love friends family who are going through a lot it's like we're being everything's being but the everything except the kitchen sink i'm going to say everything and the kitchen sink is being thrown at us right now is what it feels like to a lot of people however there's a lot of while this is happening it can seem for some of us like okay this is happening i'm going to handle this and before we know it, the next thing is thrown at us and the next thing is thrown at us. But somehow we're still here, right? Somehow we're juggling all of it and, and somehow managing it and working through it. Yes, we might have a meltdown. Yes, we might have a breakdown. It could be huge. But what I'm witnessing within myself and other people, not only that I'm working with in sessions, but in friendships and family, is it's being dealt with and processed usually much faster than it has been in the past. And my guides are like, you've got more bandwidth now. Everything's happening faster. So yes, there might be these massive life changes that come up, but we're able to process and integrate it faster than we were before, as long as we can allow ourselves to, as long as we can allow ourselves to be in the moment to recognize the clarity that's coming in. And I'm being called to go into this a little deeper. So for instances, I might have a client ask me a question and no sooner do I go into the field and offer them a perspective. Notice I didn't say give them an answer because I am giving an answer. If someone asks me, can you tell me something about my relationship that I'm missing? Or is there something about myself that I potentially don't see, or I'm looking to work with this individual. Can you tell me more about that? I can usually if I'm allowed to, or if the energy offers that, but it's always coming from my perspective. And I try to come keep a, a neutral perspective. And I also try to take into account the energies that are being offered not only with who I'm working with, but in the field of what's going on in that particular moment. What I keep being shown is we just have access to so much more than we are giving ourselves credit for. Then we've, I, I, I keep being shown a credit card that we think the limit is $300, but it's actually $300,000. And we keep charging it up to 300 and then we're like we're missing some zeros ones and zeros right so i'm being shown that we aren't giving ourselves the credit that's actually available to us this is again i say this is myself included because i has i was going through crunch town this week too 
no sooner does, does do I have a question that another question comes up or the answer that comes in leads to another question. And that's kind of what's happening. It's everything here now all at once. So if we can give ourselves the um, gift of just being open to all of the stuff that's coming in and be aware of it, doesn't mean we have to unpack it all right now. Doesn't mean we have to lean into it all right now. And I keep being shown, we can't lean into everything. Otherwise, the ship will tip over, right? I keep being shown a sailboat, right? The keel, it's gonna, it's gonna be uneven. So we have to kind of lean this way and lean that way and find our stability and find our balance. And it's difficult when everything's being thrown at us all at once, or that's what it feels like. But from another perspective, we got this. We can handle it much more than we would have been able to handle this, let's say five years ago, three years ago, five months ago. Stop for some of us five days ago. <laughs> so that's just something I'm really encouraging everybody to be encouraged about. And it's almost like we might have these massive meltdowns and then we have an influx of answers that follow that wouldn't have flooded in if we hadn't just broken down our barriers, opened up like this beautiful flower and allowed ourselves to just feel whatever it is that we were feeling in the moment, express whatever we needed to express and let go of the judgment around all of it. I say that, but I do it myself. If I, if I work with someone and I feel like the answers aren't exactly what I, as Carrie would like to, to know or understand, I still have difficulty with that. And I've been doing intuitive work for years and I still struggle with wanting a particular, an answer to be in a particular way or to look a certain way or to sound a certain way or to be in a particular topic. And what I've learned is that oftentimes our universe, our guides, our angels, our higher self, whatever we wanna label the higher version of ourselves or uh the higher energetics that we have access to sometimes those answers don't come in the same order because we have to go through certain things first in order to understand the order in order to understand the answers in the order they need to come in i'm playing with this obviously I'm going in the flow but sometimes we have to open ourselves up beyond uh where we have before to explore more <laughs> so we're really being called to do that as often as we can it's not always easy to think we need to go to to point a before we get to point b when in reality we're experiencing all of it and we're just trying to find a way to make sense of it, because the way in which we're used to interpreting it is attached to an old pattern, timeline, dimension, density, reality, version of us, whatever we want to label it as. And so that's something we're all learning together. We're all doing this in our own way. And um, not only am I experiencing it in my life, I'm experiencing it with the type of work that I do. Because if I'm working with someone, I'm using my intuition to guide me, to assist in potentially helping someone else um, access their own guidance. And so even that has shifted for me and it continues to shift. And I always have to allow myself allowance. <laughs> um, so that's where we're at right now from one perspective. And this is going to continue, you guys. We're, it's not like we drop into another reality, which is what I feel has happened, and we just automatically go, great, we're here. Everything's perfect. We're not carrying any stuff with us from our previous lifetime timeline reality. That's not true because it is in our cellular makeup. It's part of 
who we are bringing with us. So sometimes it requires us to unpack that baggage if we've brought it with us. Sometimes it requires us to clean out that closet. Sometimes it requires us to look at what's in there still, even if we think we left it, we got rid of it, we worked through it. It is what it is. And not judging ourselves of uh, looking at it going, really, this old sweater again? I thought I threw that out. Um, so I could go on and on. So that was one of the bigger messages. Be patient with ourselves. My guides are, I'm getting answers about parts of my life I completely forgot about. But now that I'm remembering those parts of my life, it's helping me make sense of so much that I didn't understand or forgotten. So that's a whole other can of worms, but let's just go into a little flow. <sighs> I'm just sitting with this energy right now for just a moment. And I'm hearing a lot of words, so I'm just gonna allow myself to feel into this. The energies of the new week, the energies of this upcoming month springing ahead to take a peek ahead at spring, hold many different gifts and feelings of deeper intuitive moments for all of us are on the path, if you will, all of us are empaths from one perspective for from that one perspective, we are all on the path to remembering ourselves. And with this comes feelings, comes the ability to feel into our empathic nature. Now, I want to stop here just for a second. I am being shown all kinds of things. First of all, as soon as I say we're all empaths, I hear some people say, no, we're not. As I say we're all empaths, I hear some people say, yeah, but that doesn't mean I am. Some people say we're empath and other people say, well, it's too much, I can't handle it. Other people say only certain people have those abilities and all of those are correct. So that was what I'm being shown is we're all on that path, but it looks different for everyone. So let us play with the word empathic for a moment. All right, so let's do that. One of the things I get called to play with a lot is getting away and out of uh, getting away from and out of defining our experience in a particular way or boxing ourselves into a particular category. And I, when I first started on this path, I was drawn to the word empath. So I was like, oh, I think I'm an empath. Oh, I think I'm a star seed. Oh, I'm, I'm a blue ray. Oh, but wait a minute. I'm an emerald ray. Oh, wait a minute. I, I have that crystalline energy, but wait a minute. I'm a crystal. No, I'm, I'm a rainbow. Oh, I'm Syrian. And so I went through all these stages of, yes, I have connections here, I have them there, I have them here and I have, and then finally I looked at it, the overall picture and was like, I'm all those things. Some people are really hung up on, this is my path. And there's nothing wrong with that. When I say hung up on, that's a play of words. I'm being shown that they're hanging up on the other calls and this is the call they're accepting. And they're hanging up on these other paths. That's the path that they've chosen to walk. Some people are choosing to walk the path of starseed and path galactic warrior. Some people are choosing to pick up the call only for uh, scientist, you know, literal, uh, analytical, factual reality. Others are only tuned in. So I mean, so we could go on and on. And I'm being called to kind of I'm hearing undress the the clothing back to closet, <laughs> pull this out of the closet and really look at what how we're wearing our titles, how we're wearing our um, labels, right? And empath is one of them. So where does empath come from? This on dictionary, apparently modeled on telepath, the word empath is shortened from empathy or the psychological ability to identify with the feelings, thoughts, or attitudes of others. 
This is funny because it says empath originates in science fiction literature. I would venture to say that is not correct, but maybe I'm wrong. Let's play with this. Yeah, it doesn't. But you guys, this is where we're called to use our discernment. So if I were just to look this up online, this is funny. Have you guys ever looked at this as pop culture by dictionary.com? Empaths be like, I got 99 problems, but 89 of them belong to other people. <laughs> that cracks me up. Okay, let's play with that for a moment too. So when I look at this, I have this plethora of meanings we could we could look at this. Now I see why my guides wanted me to focus on this. We can use words as a jacket to cover ourselves up, to protect ourselves, to blanket ourselves with, to identify with. And there's nothing wrong with identification around a particular ability or subject matter. But we're just being called to branch out and really if we want to, we don't have to, but to see things from a multiple, multiple perspectives. And the first thing I want to point out is using our discernment. This says empath originates in science fiction literature, according to dictionary.com. But that is, I feel false. And so we're going to find out, is it true or isn't it true? That's the first message in this. The second message in this is the psychological ability to identify with the feelings, thoughts, or attitudes of others. We all innately have that ability. That doesn't mean we're all going to use it. And that doesn't mean that some of us haven't shut it down from an early age. A lot of us shut it down when we're kids. We're told to focus on our own stuff or uh, the opposite, focus on everybody else. It depends on our, our upbringing. I'm going to go into this a little deeper. According to Wikipedia, um, oh, this is kind of fun. It's talking about sensory processing, sensitivity. They're used, they're going into paranormal. They're going into ooh, a dark empath. Compartmentalization, compartmentalization, compartmentalization. So I'm being called to focus on, recognize that. Even that, I have this ability, I have this ability, I am a hyper, I am a hypo, I am this. Branching out, then all of a sudden we get stuck on this one little branch and we're hung up there and we're not recognizing the call to other things. By the way, there's nothing wrong with being, we're all, I, I'm an empath, right? You're an empath, maybe watching this. I'm not saying, saying that is wrong or right. I'm just being called to play with this concept for a moment. So etymology online is a person with the high degree of empathic ability, <laughs> not to be confused with psychopath. Um, wouldn't it be funny if it actually came from empathy? Like, isn't that what common sense, the ability to sense emotions. I love the fact that they keep saying it's science fiction. If it's got fiction and it's got science, isn't part of it real because it's science based? Ah, <laughs> oh, so funny. All right, so empathy. It's the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. That has nothing to do with science fiction. That has nothing to do with um, anything else. It's like hugging someone because they're having a bad day or they got hurt. I'm um, going into Wikipedia here and there's a picture of that, hugging someone. Animals have empathy, right? Do you ever have a dog, you're having a bad day and they come up and lay down on top of you because they know you're having a bad day. I'm sharing, I'm, I'm gonna back up for a moment. What I'm being shown is this is opening up for a lot of people, that empathic nature. I'm being called to also recognize that some people have shut that down and all of a the sudden they're experiencing a flood of emotions and part of it is because they're actually starting to care about someone else's suffering or recognize that someone else is similar to them. Sometimes if someone is, let's say, very self-absorbed, 
yet they can see a similarity in another human as to what they're going through, that can create feelings of empathy. Wow, I'm going through that too. Wow, we're both human. Certain things start to click into place. Certain things start to align. Not always, but sometimes. And at that stage, that person might be experiencing empathy for the first time in their lives. So what I'm being shown is we are all experiencing it, many of us are, not all of us, in a myriad of ways. So being compassionate for others who are just opening up this can of worms is really important right now. I'm seeing heightened sensitivity. So this is maybe the energies for the week. I'm seeing, um, yeah, do you remember the character from Guardians of the Galaxy with the little antennae? And she was could feel everybody's emotions. So some of us that are already on this path of empath, that might be opening up even more. And I can hear some of you going, oh, great. That's wonderful. I'm already feeling everybody else's stuff. So let's play with that for a moment. Oftentimes, when we have the capability, or better spoken, when we become aware of the capability that we already have access to, yet we begin to use it, such as feeling others' emotions, feeling others' thoughts, feeling a certain sensation when we come into contact with another person or feel another person's anger uh, emanating off of them, feeling the ripple effect of a very negative thought pattern or vice or opposite. Uh, happy place, happy space. We feel that when we enter a particular room or a particular place in nature. All of these things are available to us. And as we open up more to these things, we access more of our innate abilities. Sometimes this is difficult for us to channel, difficult for us to focus on or in, for within we might be ex, uh, feeling a myriad of mixed emotions. I'm hearing it's a mixed bag because now we're feeling our own stuff and it's like, how do I differentiate between what I'm feeling and what somebody else is feeling? And I'm hearing know thyself. So this is where over the years, maybe as far back as the Bible, <laughs> Jesus said, know thyself, right? And a lot of teachers say know thyself the inner work is how we are able to differentiate what we have in our on our path versus what somebody else has on their path and this is difficult for some people to stay organized in so for those of you who are very empathic in nature i feel you it is literally i feel you and you feel me and we all feel we in this sea of energy that we're all part of that our feelers are sensing and moving through and interpreting and this is part of where it's something that is more accessible to us so for those of you who can resonate with that and i'm saying past the label carrie i thought you said let go of the label of empath it's more than that so that's kind of where this message is leading into it it can grow, it can become bigger than just that. It can be many paths that we're tuning into. So if that's the case, it's even more important for us to tune into our own energetic field so that we can start to extract ourselves from certain energy overwhelms. And this will require us grounding this will require us to potentially meditate more often, get into our breath. If we walk into a room or a space, it's very overwhelming because there's a lot of negative energy in there. Negative energy meaning negative thought patterns, anger, frustration, stress, right? Sometimes walking into a hospital can feel that way. Whew. Breathe. Do a couple of breaths clean it out. I visualize expelling it out. I visualize sending it into the earth. I visualize sending out a, a, a wall of light around me. I don't always like to use a wall of protection. I visualize light surrounding me because in that it's almost like the sun 
is dissolving that energy. And some of those particulates might get to me. When they tend to get to me is when I'm able to recognize it as something that's inside of me. And that can be challenging too. Let me just go into that a little deeper. If we are, well, it's different for everyone. So I won't go into that, but let's just keep going in flow. So some of this energy sticks to us because we are, uh, hearing sticky pudding. We are relishing the sweetness of life right now. Yet this includes us really being able to connect with one another. So it takes a moment rather than thinking of us disconnecting, just tuning back into our field, back into our own connection to source, the energy that moves through us, the, move, the energy that moves through all things. And I'm being called to play with the word disassociation. So in psychology, disassociating isn't necessarily a good thing, but I'm seeing that in this case, we can disassociate from somebody else's stuff. We can say, this is um, theirs. I feel strongly that isn't mine. I'm not going to connect to that because it's unnecessary. But sometimes if we get to feel it, it actually can help us feel, have a little bit of that flavor, experience a little bit of those emotions. And then we can choose in that moment not to associate with it, not to attach ourselves to it, not to become attached to any particular way of being, thinking, or feeling, especially if it isn't what we need to focus on, what we are processing and integrating. And that's okay. There's a lot of empaths that are feel like they have to feel that because that's what they came here to do. And if that's what they believe, that is then what they create, what they're choosing to follow. That's the path they're choosing to follow. And I'm being called to go back to you. That's, that's their thing, right? So that's fine. That's what they're choosing to participate in, feel. Um, and I'm hearing, who am I to tell that person what they should or should not be experiencing or feeling? So it's a sticky and crunchy time because I'm hearing boundaries. So where does the boundary begin and where does one end? And this is where we get back to know thyself. If I am tuning into someone else's field, and I do not have permission from that person to tune into that field, I can sense that generally because I know, because I've practiced, and I do not intend to go there. Sometimes we open up all of our senses, we're feeling somebody else's stuff. Does that make it wrong? Does that mean we just tapped into their field without their permission? Kind of. So this is another label I'm being called to recognize. Don't judge ourselves for feeling other people's stuff. It isn't, it's something we all can do. That doesn't mean I'm going to get nosy and start to look at that other person and why they're feeling what they're feeling and start to try to read their field. Unless it's something that I am it's like we know, you guys. It's like we have, it's something we learn also. You'll get like a push sometimes if it's not something you should tune into. I'm just being called to share that for anybody out there starting to awaken that, awaken to their intuitive skills. Sometimes we'll get a push like, mm, that's not someplace we should go. So being aware of that. And I know myself thinking, oh, that's not my stuff, that's their stuff. So I'm going to maybe just expand my light. And if that person wants to come into my space and feels that presence of me feeling, holding my presence, then so be it. That's really what I'm being shown should be our focus. Not blaming that room full of negative thought patterns on now why we're negative and grumpy. 
and this goes back to the night the end path um would be like 89 percent of it's someone else's yeah but right um that's not our problem so let's not make it our problem who you guys this is a pretty layered i guess this is the thing i think people are starting to open up to their their gifts and it's going to be a a lot of emotions swirling around is what I'm being shown. So this message is just to share, especially to recognize we're all sharing in this soup. We're all sharing in this energetic connection. And we are all being called to use our discernment, use our empathy um, in just a compassionate sense. We might be feeling another person having a bad day. They may not want a hug, but we could say, I really love giving hugs. Would you like one? We could say, is there anything I can do today to, uh, you know, help in any way? Can I be of service? But we have to be of service to ourselves first. And this is another label and judgment that many of us are being called in the spiritual community to get out of because we think that when we are service to self that's a bad thing because that's what we've been taught but remember we're playing with the definition and the words in a different way i see service to self i am going to meditate first before i go out to become service to others because if i'm not centered and i'm not grounded and i get pulled into everybody else's emotions i'm unable to unpack and differentiate my own experience one might argue well maybe Doing that is is part of the experience. And I would say you're right. But I did not come here to only experience other people's emotions. And I did not come here from my perspective to do the work for them. I can, or to get lost in their reality because that takes me off my path if that's from my perspective. So I'm just sharing these different thoughts so these are just being brought up to get people to start asking these questions. Whose stuff is this? Do I want to take that on? I don't want to take it on, but that doesn't mean I have to. I'm being called to say, you're full of negative energy. I don't need to be around you right now. That may be a little harsh. That person might be processing a lot and they don't realize that they're sending out that negative energy. By us, should, and that's part of the inner work. That's part of our discernment. That's part of us as using empath, empathy to go into integrity and not using our gifts to step on another person's toes or to put judgment or blame on them for our own condition. Because if we're feeling it, it is our responsibility in that moment in integrity with ourselves to acknowledge that and not blame that on that other person who may not be functioning at their highest level. They may not be someone who is able to understand just yet what we understand. And they may not be in a place where they can handle that scrutiny or observation or or they might be but that is a whole other topic i hope that makes sense so sometimes in that case it might be a good idea for us to recognize that's on us so i'm going to leave this space and just say thank you let's have this conversation another time i have some things i need to work on myself i have some things i have to attend to myself so that I can balance out these energies and not project any blame onto you. Because as soon as we blame another person for what we're feeling, that's something to recognize, right? Within ourselves. By the way, if someone's just full of negative energy and they're, let's say a partner, someone we live with, that's maybe a different story. Right? I'm talking more about coworkers, family, colleagues, friends, people in a, a group setting. 
Um, but we're also being called to use our into intuitive integrity with our uh, roommates. Because this goes back to empathy, having empathy for another human requires us sometimes to let go of the blame, let go of the judgment and not be so harsh is what I'm hearing, let go of the harsh words. And sometimes we have to say words that are strong, but what I'm hearing is we can do it with a soft strength. So these are the messages. So there might be some uh, things happening this week that are gonna require our utmost um yeah responsibility so that's that's what i'm seeing for the week now this is a beautiful time because what i'm being shown is those of us who be who are aware of that's what's going on we're then able to actually shift the vibration and the frequency within ourselves okay this is the next message recognizing we're creating our reality so if we can shift that awareness and and stay balanced and aligned it's actually going to help not only us stay in that field and not drop our frequency. By the way, we're going to drop keeping our frequency high all the time is not realistic in for a lot of us. I'm not saying nobody can, but that's a lot of pressure. So we're really being called to recognize the fluctuations and be okay with those fluctuations and adapt in that moment to however it is we can adapt so that we're not projecting onto someone else or and I did this last week you guys I totally projected because I I wanted to help a family member and I got a little assertive about well this person needs to do that and I realized after I was done saying that that didn't that wasn't in full integrity that was in i was having a moment where i was in fear for that other person and what i felt in my own fear that would potentially be an outcome for them in actuality that that belongs to me and i need to speak in a more mature way because that allows me to convey a higher perspective rather than just one perspective associated and attached to fear. So this is going to happen to all of us from time to time. So if we make that mistake, we can come back and acknowledge, I'm, I'm saying mistake because it's never really truly a mistake, but we might feel like it is. I spoke too harshly. I said something I didn't mean. You know, I took on this energy and I was already overwhelmed. And then I blamed you for your negative energy. And it might be that they do have negative energy. It might be that we need to address it, but it may not be that that's our responsibility to do that in that moment, if ever. Does that make sense? So it's a lot of, a lot of us starting to learn how to use our gifts a little bit more maturely. So I did apologize and I did say, you know, I'm really sorry. I, I feel like I was a little assertive and a little aggressive in how I was sharing my, my thoughts and feelings. And while I may not have been wrong in the advice that I was offering, it wasn't necessarily right either. It wasn't necessarily the right angle that needed to be or the right approach that was the highest and greatest good in alignment with the highest place of compassion and empathy. I over, I felt things empathetically that were centered around one part of that, not all that led me into compassion. Does that make sense? So that's another message that's coming through. So I'm going to kind of end on that note because what I'm being shown is we're really going to be given a lot of opportunities to show empathy, to feel it, and to be in integrity in how we present ourselves in that moment and how we share our thoughts and feelings and to be in a place of um, responsibility and maturity and adaptability. So those are all the words that are coming through. Those are the key words for the week. 
So I also, there's more, but that's the biggest message um, for whatever reason right now. So I hope someone found that helpful. And in the meantime, love and light guys. Namaste.